If you're watching this video, chances are that you are too familiar with the real numbers. But what are the real numbers, really? I mean, you might say, oh, they're the rational numbers and they're the irrational numbers. But while we define rational numbers by what they are, ratios of integers, we define the irrationals by what they're not. And that's deeply unsatisfying. Today, we're going to take two small steps away from the rational shore. First, we'll meet a class of mostly irrational numbers called the algebraic numbers. Then we'll investigate how close together the rational and irrational numbers are on the real number line. There's a wide expanse of jungle in between the rational numbers and all the reals. And there are some pretty nasty critters in there whose properties are actually still unknown to mathematics. So we're going to start with an easy step forward. If we think of a rational number like 7 twelfths as being the solution of the degree 1 equation 12x minus 7 is equal to 0, then if we push that a little bit, what about the solutions to degree 2 equations, like x squared minus 2 equals 0, or degree 3 equations? The roots of polynomials with integer coefficients are called the algebraic numbers, and most of them are irrational. We study their properties in depth in abstract algebra 2. So how do we know whether an algebraic number is irrational? If we know a polynomial of which it is a root, then we can use the rational roots theorem to classify what are all of the possible rational roots of that polynomial. Then, if we check that none of those possible rational roots are in fact a root of that polynomial, then we've ruled out the possibility that x is rational. We can also use synthetic division instead of just plugging in the numbers into the polynomial if we wish. Finally, how close together are the rational and irrational numbers on the number line? We'll see that the answer is as close as you like. Meet epsilon, the Greek letter e. In analysis, epsilon is often used to represent a real quantity that is as small as you like. If x is a rational number, then is there always another rational number within an epsilon's reach of x? We'll find out that the answer to this question is yes. No matter how small we make epsilon, there is another rational number within an epsilon's reach of x. And we say that q is dense in q. The same is also true of the irrational numbers within themselves. And also, there is a rational within an epsilon's reach of any irrational and vice versa. So both q, the rational numbers, and i, the irrational numbers, are dense both in themselves and in one another.